Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to start off by trying to do the successful re-entry contract again because last time we had imbalanced parachutes that threw us off. This time hopefully the parachutes are balanced and so that's the version that's being constructed there. But before I do that I'm going to get some more funds, uh, spend some more funds to get uh, more R&D quicker. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Get it up to there, and then uh, maybe a little bit extra build points. So that's it for now. And then I'm going to time warp. Well, we have stability and advanced rocketry here. Advanced rocketry is currently going to take a year. Uh, but I have to keep in mind, if I want a launch pad upgrade, that's 150,000. So I'm not, I don't want to spend too much too quickly. I know the sort of... Uh, speed running way of doing things is to just spend money as quickly as possible but I'm very conservative and I'm not speed running per se and after all if you're starting in the year 2000 you know go ahead and speed run if you like but you're not beating out a particular date anymore right you're not beating out 1969 or 1957 or anything like that so you know uh, whatever date you happen to do stuff is great <laughs> so uh, perfectly would have been perfectly all right to do it by that date so yeah, so I'll be going conservatively and trying not to run out of money because after all, uh, if a person is speed running, they can just start over and uh, you know iterate from there. But I'm trying to create a series, <laughs> and so if I run out of money, it's a little bit more embarrassing. Anyway, a little bit more inconvenient as far as the situation is concerned. I really don't want to like go, okay, well, we ran out of money. Let me load up an earlier save or something that I don't want to do that. So I'll play it conservatively for that reason. Okay, getting that rolled out. And this one does not require us to be in line with anything. So we'll time up to daylight. We really should have something else being constructed though. Even though it's just got to be an hour or something. They've got some more satellite contracts. That, that's pretty high and weird. So that's different. Uh, I would have liked a satellite contract around the moon, actually. There's a science data from space around the moon contract. We can just pick that up. This has got a long duration anyway. Surface of the moon is a little bit more complicated. We might as well pick up the Earth one. We've got a total of seven that we can pick up now because we upgraded the mission control building. Uh, as far as the main RP-2000 stuff is concerned, I'm looking to do lunar impactor and lunar orbit, but, uh, well, I guess we can pick those up. This successful reentry, we already got paid for it, so I'm doing the one we already got paid for and it completed even though I didn't actually do it. I would like to get to uncrewed moon landing. I wonder if that's possible with a 40 ton rocket considering that's our pad limit. I think that's something we should investigate. But certainly the lunar impactor and lunar orbit is something that we will do in this episode, I think. As long as we can do the re-entry properly. I swear, I changed it to geosynchronous and it still says geosynchronous there. It just doesn't pay attention to me. And that's totally not geosynchronous or geosynchronous. It's not synchronous to anything. It's just weird. Okay, we'll set that aside for now. I'm not gonna take it out of principle. All right, so launch. Oh, I was supposed to queue up a new rocket. I'm here now, let's just go. All right, throttle up. Uh, SAS is possible because we do have the payload adapter this time. Ignition. And launch. Certainly don't need a two engine version. This is not going beyond low earth orbit. We have power for basically two orbits. We are coming down on the first one. One thing RP-1 has a lot of that I don't right now are cameras. <laughs> they definitely have uh, spy satellite stuff. Lots of that. This kind of mission is very similar to the Discoverer missions that the CIA had with and they were bringing the capsules back down in order to get photographs, right? Spy... spy photos. As we are past the speed of sound. 
So it'd be nice to use it for that, but that's not what we're, what we're doing. I wonder where the Science Junior has ended up. We could do the goo. I should have put the goo on here, at least. Maybe with the next successful re-entry contract, I'll put goo. Okay, staging. This is basically acting like my equivalent of the AJ-10 at the top of Delta-2. And fairings. All right, next stage. Okay, unusually circular orbit for me. And, well, you know, circular enough. I could, I could probably boost it up to exactly, well, not exactly exactly, but pretty darn close. But I don't care. I don't care. It's close enough. All right, so we are in orbit. I'm already going to arm the parachutes. And hopefully they are balanced. And we are going to go over to where we want to do the re-entry burn, which is over Australia. Amber is really far down there. Okay, nope. Retrograde. Okay, ignition. Now I'll take 64 kilometers. That's fine. Okie dokie. Separation of stage. Maybe I should just put these thrusters on this. Uh, right now they're too close to the to the center to really have a lot of authority. But this is more convenient in a way. And it's not like we're short of hydrazine. If for some reason the ether engine decided to fail on us then these would be required to do the re-entry burn. So that's a consideration. Okay, both parachutes are armed just in case we lose communication. And, but we are approaching the west coast of the United States, so probably we shouldn't lose communication. Looking for a Pacific Ocean splashdown. We don't have to actually fulfill a contract right now, it's just that we're making up for one. So as long as we do it, I'll be satisfied. So far it's okay, but you know, we haven't researched stability yet, so... <laughs> well, stability doesn't mean that, but it just means added stability. I think we may have enough stability this time. Let's see. Okay, well, over Baja, California now. But the payload adapter is overheating. I hate it when things behind the heat shield, most definitely behind the heat shield here, decide to overheat. And this isn't a procedural tank, you know, we have to be wary of those. But this shouldn't be overheating either. Our heat shield heat conductivity is just too high. It is getting some char ablator here, but it needs to char faster and its structure should not be conducting so much heat. I don't think I set the payload adapter heat tolerance too low, but probably realism overhaul is overwriting it with some default number though. Which should still be fine, the heat, the heat shield should just deal with that part, that's what heat shields are for. At least we're stable this time. I'll fizz warp. Hopefully this is gonna be okay. Probably wouldn't be okay coming back from the moon though. So much for the Pacific. Yeah, uh, we're definitely going closer to Cape Canaveral. Maybe we'll be right at Houston or something. If it survives, I mean. Let me just come out. Oh, wait, when I come out time, when I came out of time warp, it immediately overheated and exploded. Okay, well, um, hmm. Okay, let's review the situation. This is very sus. This time, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong this time. The... Well, Ether, that's, that's before. Halo Adapter with Control Core has a heat tolerance of 1073, so that's not even low particularly. Same as most things. 
But okay, um, what can I do to stop this? Maybe I can oversize the heat shield, heat shield a little bit. Maybe it's, you know, the heat is poking around somewhat. I forget if moving it down helps, but I could find another part there. We're not overburdened or anything. Is there a structural part? I mean, 1073 is pretty good. Really, it's not just the heat tolerance that we should be concerned about, it's more like the heat conductivity. The, the couplers are even worse. I don't super duper see anything that has a high heat tolerance. Well, this shielded procedural tank has a high heat tolerance. <laughs> uh, well, you know. Heat resistance switchable procedural tank. Well, heat resistance is the only thing that we have that seems to have more than 1073. I don't think I should have to do this, but... You know, uh, its dry mass is only 136 grams right now. We can go for one kilogram? Serious? Lead ballast. Well, you know. At least give it some weight, 123 kilograms now. But no, that really hurts our efficiency. Okay, well, we'll take the super lightweight tank. That's half a kilo, uh, you know, a pound. Really, it's a pound. Okay, that's one thing. We've made this heat shield wider. Do I want to do anything else? Let's just put goo on. Oh, goo is huge though. Now wait, do we have a different container? We've got this biology experiment. It says observe plants. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Well, let's find out. Um, it's a bit big. We've got the regular thermometer and barometer, but that those are redundant. Sometimes I swear when you take off the parachutes and put them back on again, they lose their properties. So let's double check that. Oh look, it, yeah, I reset the part mass there, so watch out for that. They were balanced just now, but when I took them off and put them on again... It reset it. So keep that in mind for real shoots. Okay, I've decided to put those thrusters there instead. Give them a little bit more leverage. I'm gonna move this down, just so it looks better. And widen that. But not make it too heavy. Oh, the batteries are floating now. So yeah, in there, we've got a plant there. You can sort of see it. It's clipped into the top of the payload adapter right now. Okay, well, this is a little bit more complicated with the science. We'll see how that works out for us. Not a great thing to make things more complicated when you just failed, but... Yeah. <laughs> we're doing it. Okay. I might want that advanced rocketry for the next thing, so let me spend more on upgrade points. Let me spend more on R&D. I'd like to get to one build point per second. Whatever happens with this one, next we're going to the moon. Okay, it's Halloween in 2002, and I feel like we should have painted our rocket orange and black, but anyway, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. Will our fixes make this capable of uh, surviving? Why didn't it survive the last time? Well, we'll see. Hopefully I haven't overburdened the uh, parachutes too much. But the biology experiment shouldn't be very heavy. We did reapply the parachute settings, but I forget if that was before or after I put the biology experiment. Alright, staging. And fairing set. Observe plants. It's a custom experiment. I, I forget whether it's configured properly for this situation though, that's the only thing. We'll wait until we're in space and then observe the plants. 
Okay, we are in space. Might as well give it a go. All right. Keep six science. I mean, reasonable. It's it's just a mystery goo. It's just a mystery goo. Well, the tech. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a mystery goo experiment. I guess the plants turned into mystery mystery goo. It's all I can figure out. Maybe we should make it a different experiment, though. Okay, and ether. And shut down. All right, very good. We certainly have enough delta V to deorbit. Let us do the usual thing. Oh, the first part of the usual thing is to arm the parachutes. Okay. Let's see if our protective supplementary tank will help. Or maybe just increasing the size of the heat shield was the key thing. Oh, we've got a helper satellite Serenity 2 is communicating with us. In fact, it's currently communicating with that Serenity 2, which was one of the failed geosynchronous satellites. And that's bouncing it to Australia, Canberra. So we've got a nice little network going, of sorts. And... Cameras all over the place. All right, ignition. Okay, I'm going in a little bit more steeply. Maybe that's the wrong thing to do, but you know, the heat shield should be able to take it. It is a Leo heat shield. This is from Leo. Maybe it's a little bit too deep, but then again, heat accumulation is also a thing. There's the severity of the heat and also the accumulation of the heat, so. You'll see. Okay, off it goes. Oh, oh uh, I probably enable crossfeed. There we go. The payload adapter doesn't crossfeed by default. Of course, it's basically a decoupler. Okay, we seem to be better heat protected this time. I might consider using this tank as standard operating procedure, really. I mean, it is light after all. Which is strange, but let's not argue with it. It's, not, it's one of the legacy procedural tank parts. It's not one of the more... The, one of the newer ones, like the isogrid and all that stuff. For right now, we just want it to make the heat shields work like heat shields. That's all. That's all I ask. Okay, well, we've got all sorts of re-entry effects. We're a little bit faster than I'd like at this height. 5 Gs. Topping out at a little less than 8 Gs. We are using a lot of control authority. Uh, not actually a lot of hydrazine. They are still tiny thrusters. But yeah, that part worked. We used about half of our blader. Let's just round it out. I'm sure the aerodynamics are holding us uh, off. Off. I'm just trying to fight for a tiny little bit of tilt, that's all. Okay, we are still in communication, but the parachutes are armed. And we'll probably stay in communication thanks to that Serenity 2 there. Well, we had a battery short circuit. Always pack a bunch of these if you're using O scrap. We have parachute deployment. Wow, okay, that's way too much parachute, but we could hardly make them any smaller, so... At 2.1 meters per second somehow. And that's after I added extra mass. So somehow the little parachutes didn't really size as small as I would like them to. But what can we do? We're just too tiny. Actually, most of our mass is the parachute mass, I think.
Okay, we've splashed down. I don't want it to sink. Recover. No more recovery. All right. Okay, we got some science. Recovery of a vessel returned from Earth orbit gave us science as well, but the mystery goo counted. Obviously no crew. Yeah, okay. No problems there. First thing we've recovered. And finally we fulfilled that particular contract that it said we already fulfilled. Uh, well, to the moon. And we'll get into lunar orbit and then impact the moon. Uh, and we already did the science data from space around Earth, of course. So yeah, we should be able to take care of these three at the same time. Let's see. Alright, I'm just building another one of the Serenity 3s, the same type that we've already used, and hoping it can get into lunar orbit just fine. Let us see. I forgot to mention earlier, but of course the fixes to real antennas uh, so that, you know, we get year 2000 DSN and stuff like that have been uploaded and are part of RP2000 is version 0.1.2. And so if you haven't gotten 0.1.2, uh, you probably should. As usual, you should unzip and overwrite everything relevant. Uh, yeah, just overwrite everything. Always make sure that if you update other mods, that you unzip RP2000 last and overwrite the stuff. Um, I could create other patches and try to make it final, but a lot of the times these other mods try to make themselves the last thing to load, so it's just better to overwrite the stuff. Uh, yeah. It depends on how the mod uh, interacts with module, module Manager, and it's just safest, I think, to overwrite them for our purposes. At least they'll be consistent. So, with that, let me roll out this Serenity 3, and let's launch. When do we get to launch? It'll be nighttime. Okay, here we go. There's no SAS on this model. Uh, throttle up, ignition, and launch. Our dual reavers are a go. Through the cloud layer, and past the speed of sound. Okay, peak G force again. Separation ignition. And we can dump fairings. Still waiting to see when test light might get us again. This does have an ignition failure rate. Does have a mean time before failure and everything. Okay, just about done here. And just making sure separation and ignition. Okay, that's that. Plenty of Delta V in this stage. Of course, we can't carry it to the moon with us. The little upper stage will have to do that part. But... Yeah, I think we'll be good to go. Depends on our comms, though. Those sites are going to move along before we get to do this burn. This time for orbit. But we certainly have a nice opportunity there. We'll have to make sure that the periapsis has communication. Oh, does this not have the Commutron 16 on it? Uh-oh. Um, does this actually have the ability to communicate? This is just UHF. I don't know if it can go to the moon. Where did... why did we... this is... Hmm. I guess I had taken it off for the geosynchronous ones. Still possible. Well, not like that. <laughs> um, but we could be relayed by something else. Oops. Oops. We don't have the communication that I wanted. But yeah, maybe we can get relayed, but that's tough. No wonder it adds so much delta V. <laughs> We didn't have the Commutron. The Commutron actually cuts down the del Delta V quite a lot. Okay, go.
Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Too much, too much, too much. Stop. Okay, well. We've got a good location around the moon. The problem is. You may not have comms, so that's the issue. Because of the touchiness of our approach, I'm not going to stop this spin. We will just keep spinning for now. Yeah. Uh, no probe control. I should have just aimed for the impact. It's complicated with the comms. It's not about forgetting comms. We had comms, it's just we had the wrong band of comms, right? That is the UHF comms that we need in order to control it in low Earth orbit, but we need then the S-band comms that we have with the Communitron 16 so that we can communicate from long distances, and that is what we don't have here. So yeah, this is just dead and approaching the moon. We'll get to our low point around the moon, but I'll wrap it up here. We're not going to magically get, uh, get calm suddenly. So I'll just wrap it up with this and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.